Hey everyone. So I don't do a whole lot of videos on my channel usually, but every now and then I find something that's kind of cool, kind of unique, kind of different, and something that hasn't been covered a hundred times over on other retro game channels. And I would say that this latest hardware score definitely qualifies as that. And what is this, you might ask? This is an original Famicom with a couple of interesting modifications performed on it. The first of which might be obvious if you know anything about the Famicom, which is the original Nintendo that was offered in Japan. So we got the NES, NTSC, kind of squarish, rectangular toaster. They got this, which is an interesting looking beast. It's kind of almost so ugly it's pretty type thing. Um, kind of garish, but definitely interesting looking. Uh, but what are the modifications here? So the first of which, like I said, you might notice right out of the gate, it's not tethered to the controllers, which is one of the kind of the famous kind of hallmarks of that system was the fact it was tethered to the back of the unit in the left and right corners. And this one, as you can see, instead of that, we have a Bluetooth transceiver pairing button. So here's the one player, here's the two player. And which is kind of cool. So you almost have like almost native support for 8-bit do Bluetooth controllers. But that's not the extent of it. What else does this have? How about a Keftris HDMI high def modification? Now that's pretty cool because if you know anything about these units, they are notoriously difficult to have that modification performed on them. It's not as easy as doing a top loader or even a standard NES or even the Japanese AV Famicom, which is the kind of the equivalent of our top loader. This one is very hard to do. There's not a lot of space. Uh, and most of it happens right here. So, you know, the eject button functionality is actually the first thing that goes. And in this unit, it's, it's no different. The, the functionality for the eject button has been removed. This is purely cosmetic at this point, uh, which is not a big deal because the cartridge still works just like a, like a Super Nintendo or anything else with any other top loading system. Just drop it in, pull it out. Um, and I didn't go through the full motion there because I don't have both hands available to me right now. But, rest assured, it's easy enough. But, I know this is a hard install because I reached out to a couple people originally when the Captress mod was first introduced and I wanted to get it done because I already had an RG modded top loader and I wanted to do something a little different. And they told me basically to hit the road that it's not something that should be done, couldn't be done. Forget about it. So I said, alright, fair enough. Six or eight months later, I see one of these out here for sale and of course I'm interested. So I reach out to the guy and I ask him, hey, you know, how'd you do this? And he broke it down for me. He said it was not an easy install. He was a guy named Skips that was known from some of the, uh, kind of the, the hardware modification forums where you could you know, contract him out, do work for you, things like that. And, uh, but he no longer does this. He actually does this for his own, he did this for his own personal system. He wanted a, a unique, uh, you know, something that he could do that was unique for his Nintendo needs. And obviously this was it. So, I bought it from him, and I've really enjoyed it. It's been, a, it's been an awesome little machine. It's, uh, again, I have an RGB modded top loader that I use for most of my daily driving needs for NES, but this one, this one is going into the living room. So, uh, you know, obviously with no cords, it's easy for me to do this, and it actually gives me an opportunity to have kind of a conversation piece in that most people that come here that aren't hardcore uh, retro gaming enthusiasts are like, what in the world is a family computer, and why is it hooked up to your television? And once I explain it to them that, hey, this is actually the Japanese Nintendo, they get a kick out of that and inevitably it leads to some Contra playing or some Castlevania playing or Super Mario Brothers or what have you, which is nice. Always fun. So yeah, so do I have any problems with this? Uh, you know, I've liked it, but I gotta say the big problem that I have with it is around these controllers, the 8-bit do. I mean, and I, this, this machine is all in on them, right? So you either <laughs> you like them or you don't, uh, but that's really what it's got to offer for, for controller input at this point. The downside of this controller, it doesn't have anything to do with the build quality, which is great. Uh, you know, they look the part. This is the FC30 that has the kind of the, the maroon and gold com you know, combo like the original had. The buttons are, are fine. The select start button is fine. It's this dreadful D-pad. It is absolutely horrendous. Probably one of the worst D-pads I've used. And I cannot believe that all these reviews out there just rave about how great this thing is and don't bring up how pathetic the D-pad is. And it's not just these because this actual unit can pair to any other 8-bit uh, do controllers that are out there. And I actually have another one of these. Uh, this is for this is the SNES 30 model, which is for the obviously Super Nintendo, but they all work the same. They pair and work. And it does the exact same thing. So big flaw with 8-bit do controllers. Uh, 
I don't like it, but I have been able to go in there and modify that to correct it. Uh, I've used the actual, this D-pad is actually from an NES, and so is the rubber kind of um, membrane underneath there is from an NES controller as well. And I actually had to go and take this thing apart and tape certain portions of it down around the contact area to ensure that it had proper kind of contact around when the D-pad depresses. And I might do that in another video because surprisingly enough, I don't see that video out there on YouTube. So you might see me go ahead and, uh, and do a review on kind of how to do that or kind of an overview on how to do that because it would be helpful for these people that are out there that may be dealing with the same thing I was dealing with date but do. So anyway, performance, let's take a look at it and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we're back in the game room now and I have the HDMI high def captures Famicom installed here. And we're actually gonna get an opportunity to take a look at it and unfortunately I don't have any kind of capture hardware right now to properly capture the video. So I'm just gonna do it in a very ghetto way and just kind of zoom in here on the screen so you can get an idea of the kind of the quality that this thing can output. And it's pretty impressive. You know, you can see the scan lines are enabled here and you can kind of get an idea for the look and feel of that. And some people really dig that. A lot of people really dig that. And I gotta say, the video quality of this thing compares favorably to, you know, the aforementioned NES Doppler, which is RGB modded, running through the Frame Master XRGB Mini. So it's good, you know? Uh, you know, basically has the functionality of the Frame Master as far as the upscaling built into the unit, which is the whole idea behind the, the Kedris HDMI mod. So pretty impressive. But again, I'm not here to do a full comparison of the RGB versus the HDMI, there's plenty of other videos out there that can do that for you if that's what you're interested in. But just so you can get a taste of kind of what this thing is capable of and what it does and how it looks, pretty impressive. Uh, I like it. So, so here's a look at another game here. Mike Tyson's punch out, ball of bull. Pretty impressive, looks good. So yeah. Yeah, so overall I've been really pleased with this system and I think it compares really favorably to the RGB modded top loader, but serves a slightly different purpose. So that's it for now. But if you guys have any questions or comments regarding this one and how it compares to the RGB modded top loader or anything else in general, just let me know in the comments. Thanks.